You're watching Aurora Sentinel's football game of the week live on Stream It Sports. Center stage, Legacy Stadium, Southeast Aurora, 7 to 1 p.m. Mountain Time, getting ready for the A Town game of the week. Kickoff right now. Eagle Crest booting it away to the Aurora West. Wildcats, as we get ready for this matchup between two conference foes in the Mount Wilson League in Class 5A in the state of Colorado. On the left side of your monitor, Arvada West, the Wildcats, 6-3 and three right now. Overall, their best record since 2010, their most win totals the entire decade, improving each and every year under third-year head coach Brad Pyatt, the guys in white with the football to start off this game. Eagle Crest defending, you see them a chance for a second undefeated season in the history of their program. The Raptors are defending the Black Hats, also clad in black with the Red Sox. I'm Marty Cesario, welcome to Aurora, Colorado. We are live from Legacy Stadium, just to the south of the Aurora Reservoir with executive producer Phil Mildren, Dominic Serva, Alex Wines, Gail Kakak on the Visuals and technical direction. We have a second down play coming up from the 21 yard line. Arvada West on offense. Rolling to the near side and then the pass downfield. That's well covered. And that will fall incomplete. So we're just 35 seconds in to this first quarter. That pass coming from the very talented Johnny Crutch of the A West Wildcats. Let's go ahead and look at those starters for Arvada West. Take a peek at them. Johnny Crutch, I just mentioned him, the quarterback for A West. You're going to want to look at Joey Perez, the running back, all night long. Big, thick, 235 pounder. He's got some skills. Chase Dixon is a very talented wide receiver as a third and nine play comes up from their own 21 yard line. A West looking for a first down. Pressure coming to the face of Crutch. He does get the completion around the 32 yard line. We'll see if if that will be a successful first down conversion for Arvada West, and indeed it is. So three plays, and eventually the first down. Look at that Eagle Crest defense. Victor Garns playing free safety. You're going to watch him all night long. Quentin Bowen is so talented at the linebacker position, along with Kyle Johnson and Cody Barton roaming around the football field. For the guys in black, that is Eagle Crest defending. First down, 32-yard line. Opening possession, Arvada West. A helmet is on the turf as a running attempt goes to the far side off tackle via the feet of Tony Cass, who will play both ways. Cass is going to go top of the screen and off the field. That'll be a four-yard pickup for Tony Cass, who we will also talk about very often in this football game. Arvada West, 6-3 and three overall, 2-2 two and two within the Mount Wilson Conference, sitting at 29 in the current RPI. 16 teams get in in the upcoming Class 5A playoffs. There's the handoff to Joey Perez. Again, off tackle that far side, and he'll be close to the first down. Not enough on first react, looking at it. It'll bring up a third down and two from the 40-yard line for Arvada West. Head coach Brad Pyatt, third year. Third down for a alum of Arvada West High School, won a state championship back in the day with Arvada West, and then eventually progressed, played at Kentucky, Northern Colorado, and also in the NFL for a quartet of teams, including the Indianapolis Colts. Run play up the middle for Arvada West, an Eagle Crest defensive line, real stout up front. Defensive line. Get a read on some of those big boys making stops. Harrison Starling, 62, right there in front of the camera. Also big 72 for Eagle Crest in on the play. Matt Youngblood. Fourth down and three, Arvada West. Fair to say the underdog, they're going to go for it in this situation. Fourth down play coming up, Crutch. Looks at his play sheet on the left wrist. Barks out orders behind him. Are they trying to draw Eagle Crest offsides? Or will they go for it? We do get the snap. Perez, near side, off tackle. He's going to get across another first down for the Wildcats of Arvada West. There's a look at the replay. Just a simple power run play. 
Off guard, finds that right side gap, and Perez gets over and through. A.J. Ortez, the left guard, doing a nice job, along with Conrad Dehera Brooks and Devin Beal on this near side. So another first down. So A. West, consecutive first downs to open up this football game, sitting at the 43-yard line in A. West territory. First down and 10. Man coverage, one-on-one -on -one situation, ball falls incomplete. Intended receiver for Arvada West is Chase Dixon. Chase Dixon, top three in Class 5A in receiving yards this year. He's going to be the go-to target for Johnny Crutch. Dixon with 62 catches on the season. It's a nice mark through nine games. Dixon playing his final game for the Purple Cats. Second down and 10. Rolling, crutch, connects, and then Big Boy receiving it, knocks a defender down. Garrett Shipman doing a nice job, so linebacker playing tight end. Gets a reception on that play, and that'll split the down and distance markers. Five yards to go for the so first. third and five coming up from the 48-yard line for Arvada West. Seventh play of the drive, third and five. 7.51 on the clock and counting. Crutch spins, hands off to Perez, whistle blown, stoppage in play. See some low fives for the Eagle Crest defense. And that is why. We've got the trippy feedback going from Pink Floyd and the officiating crew. 7.44 on the clock right now, so that'll push Arvada West back. Still a third down situation. Set the ball at the 43-yard line, Johnny Crutch, the sophomore starter, a two-year starter for Arvada West, leading his offense, and he'll go under center on this third down situation. Toss, one-on-one -on -one opportunity for the defensive back to make a play, and he does. That's an interception for Eagle Crest. 2-4 is Kyle Johnson, Johnson consecutive no weeks. He's been able to pick off a pass, so Kyle Johnson with an INT for Eagle Crest at the 732 mark. One thing Arvada West can't afford to do too much against a very talented and undefeated Eagle Crest team is make unforced errors. Kyle Johnson sets up his team at their own 29 and a first look at the Eagle Crest offense. See their last league championship, 1993. They've already clinched the conference title. Talking to Coach Mike Schmidt during the week, his boys know they want to go out the right way in terms of the regular season and also very critical. They're automatically qualified for a top six seed in the playoffs, but this is last chance to make an impression before the seeding committee gets together with the Colorado High School Activities Association. Near side toss, that's Kenny Wantings, the track star. And that'll be little or no gain. Let's go ahead and look at the starters for Eagle Crest. I mentioned Wantings, who's uh, who's starting, and we're taking a peek at Arvada West defense. A couple of the top stars, Garrett Shipman already ma mentioned him receiving the, the football on the previous possession of Arvada West as we're just getting going and really churning clock. 637, one possession for Arvada West. That concluded with a Kyle Johnson interception, and this is the first possession for Eagle Crest. We'll take a look at the Raptors starters after this play coming up. Third and 11 approaching. And now push it up a little bit. There's the Eagle Crest offense. Mergerson, so talented, running the offense. Thurn Sandoval Jimenez, Kenny Wantings, a couple of very talented skills players. Reese Atterbury, Barry Miller up front. That offensive line's had a great year. Toss to the far side, Vic Garns. I didn't mention him on the graphic, but we're going to talk about him all night long as we have all season. That time, Arvada West defense 
able to collect Garns and drop him before he can advance to the first down. So a short gain on the toss to Garns, fourth and four coming up from the 35 yard line. So that's a good series for the defense of A West. Three and out after giving up the interception. The boot fairly short, bounces at the 35 and backwards, and now it's going to be downed. Eventually, touchdown at the 36 yard line where the Wildcats will take over. John Heipel stops the play, and so we get a second look at the Arvada West offense. A Town Game of the Week. Fans, presented and supported by the Aurora Sentinel. Shout to Coach New Oaks. The reporter who's roaming around chasing volleyball and football games all this evening. We will have him visit a little bit later on during this broadcast. First and 10 play, 37 yard line. You can hear the whistle through the crowd microphones. 536 on the clock. A West, second possession starting. Hand off to the interior. Joey Perez immediately picked up by one of those D linemen. Wildcats take the... I always look for 49, Keontae Christian. He was involved, the junior defensive lineman, having Harrison a great year. There to meet him. Brings up second down for the Wildcats. Big 79, getting linemen out of the way. Jackie Wynn up front there. You can see Jackie. That was a gain of three by Perez. Again, second series for the Wildcats. Their opening possession, able to get two first downs, but then threw the interception to Kyle Johnson at the 732 mark in this opening quarter. We are just getting started here at Legacy Stadium in Aurora. A West march back five yards for a legal motion. 453 first quarter. At the conclusion of this contest, we'll have the A-Town player of the game brought to you by Aurora Sentinel. Always like to make sure I converse with Courtney Oaks and our crew on who that might be. A-Town player of the game coming up at the conclusion of this contest. Be sure to look around aurorasentinel.com for all the amazing content they have to offer in the Aurora community. Second down, 12. Crutch, gonna look downfield, has a man on the sideline, tippy toe and waiting for the verdict from the official. And that is a successful connection to Chris McCairn. Listed as a running back, the sophomore, nice piece of work on the near sideline. And another first down for A West. Spot the ball at the 46 yard line. Will be third down and one for the Wildcats. Third first down of this first quarter for Arvada West. See, every once in a while, Johnny Crutch goes over to the far sideline to have a discussion with the offensive staff. And correct myself, that wasn't a first down play. This leaves a third and one, and there's the sneak from Crutch, and I believe he's going to get across. Crutch takes the quick snap. See one of the linemen for A West trying to help out, persuade the officiating staff. Nice work, Christopher Gist. Jackie Wynn there on the tackle. So I misspoke earlier, but one play later after the sneak from Crutch, it is indeed the third first down of the first quarter for A West. Second time Arvada West in this opening period has gotten to the 48-yard line. Last possession from the 48, threw the ball downfield, and Kyle Johnson from Eagle Crest intercepted it. Toss play read well by the defense of Eagle Crest, getting away very nicely Tony is Tony Cass. Cass. Elijah but a better Taylor read defensively by Sunday. Elijah Anderson Taylor, the sophomore linebacker who got five yards deep beyond the line of scrimmage to disrupt that play. 252 first quarter. Second down and seven coming up for A West. A West coming off the 26 14 loss to Castleview last week that ruined their attempt to create a situation here where these two teams would be playing for a conference title. 
Perez spun around. Joe Perez stopped in the back. Swarming, back swarming defense, 30, doing a great job. Taylor. Getting a hold Princess of Perez. No Garns coming awesome through player. from Jackson deep in the defensive line. backfield. And the rest of his teammates help stop Perez. Third and eight coming up from the 50 yard line. Six play of the drive, 201 on the clock. Crutch looks across the field, so do his teammates. See two up top, two on the bottom. Connection, A West, open space, and eventually brought down across the 30 yard line. Pass completion, Chase Dixon with the first down for Arvada West. Pretty piece of work there. You see the replay. And this is some of the things that Coach Pyatt talks about and brags about with his young quarterback. Nice route run by Dixon. And then Johnny Crutch, who's grown into his position, making excellent reads beyond his age. He's only 15 years old, 16 years old. Making a safe toss for a first down. Perez again via the run game. Christian attacks and makes the tackle. Cody Barden, Keontae Christian combining on the stop. Nice work by Watson Christian. By he was on the far three. side, comes Cody across and then slides over to make the tackle. Second, second and 11, first. loss of one by Perez. 31 yard line, 50 seconds left in the first quarter. A. West spread out in formation, but methodical and conservative in terms of length of time snapping the football. And then a whistle blown. Part of the snap, snap and fraction in the 50 of the offense. Well, this follows up that nice connection between Johnny Crutch and Chase Dixon. Crutch, consecutive 2,000-yard passing seasons. Indication of him protecting the football more. 17 touchdowns, only nine interceptions this year for the two-year starter, and I say that and then mention he's just a sophomore. 36-yard line, second and 16. Downfield, over the top, making a play for it. Both the defender, Dixon, being chased by Kyle Johnson. Broke up on the play by number 24. And based on the result, Johnson. we'll give the win for Kyle Johnson. Thought maybe that was going to get over the top and into the hands of Dixon. Not the case. Incomplete third down 16 coming up. 36 yard line, 20 seconds left. There it is. Nice recovery by Johnson, then gets a hand up in the air. Knock it down. Again, third and 16. Fake the handoff, reverse around the far side. Look at that close. And then the splash play on the tackle for Eagle Crest. Corey, Corey Corbin was decisive. Corey Corbin laying the wood. That's a pretty piece of work. Put that on his highlight tape. Not only the speed that caught your attention, great angle, but then just destroyed one of the skills players for A. West. So that play by Eagle Crest and their defense makes the big stop, will put their opponents in a fourth down situation and will end the quarter. And we'll go ahead and take a break. No score on the clock, A. West, will they punt coming up? Liam Spa set to punt for the Wildcats. Back deep, Victor Gorms. Fourth quarter play, 
See if A. West can pin Eagle Crest offense. Problem, Garns has the football, returning it. Finds his spot, gets through, and now he's got some space. A couple of blockers in front of him. Evades, continues across the 50, brought down at the 40-yard line. Number 12 is doing it again once he gets his chance. Returns the punt all the way down. Victor to the Garns the with a 53-yard punt return. Trevor Lepke. Finally, There's the replay. Have it no arm tackles will be successful with that kid. Line. And eventually brought down good hustle. Chasing him down was Trevor Lepke. So, presented a situation you thought Eagle Crest would be pinned back behind their own 10. That was a possibility, but a big return by Garns. And now Eagle Crest starts their second possession at the plus 40. Wantings running the football, escapes one tackle, upended, and across the 35. Kenny Wantings bouncing it outside for the nice gain on the play. And here comes the hustle. The Oregon-ish offense of Eagle Crest. A gain of six for Wantings to the third. Pardon me, the 34-yard line. Second and four coming up. 11:41, second quarter. Up the middle, power run play. And that's going to be close to the first down. The carry by Wantings once again. Robert Rizzuto with the So you get a good, nice, tight shot from Dominic on that offensive line, line that is a critical part of why Eagle Crest is undefeated in the 2016 season. Defender bounces across, encroachment is my read. Part of the snap, encroachment, number 49. And the defense, by yard penalty, results in a first down. Well, how about that? The first first down of the game for Eagle Crest comes Ball in the second pass, quarter the and via a penalty. To work with. Ball spot at the 26 yard line. 26 yard line, first down play. The same play repeated, Wantings up the he middle. Wantings the ball carrier. Tripped up on the play by number 49, Jeff Just following Curry. Max Shaw and the couple of guards, Bear Miller and Chad Ronish. Up Miller, you don't miss. 6'5", 285, the sophomore, who started as a freshman last year. Wanting's gained four on that play. Here comes Mergerson on the run, and he's going to get across the goal line. Touchdown, Touchdown Eagle Crest. Jalen Mergerson. Jalen Mergerson scampering his way to the Raptor touchdown. Here's the replay, evades one tackler, gets through second level, and bye. Mergerson has done that all year long. A little bigger now that he's a junior, two-year starter. Always good on his feet, but now he can absorb some impacts. Still got those skills running the football. 22-yard touchdown, PAT up, and it is good. Shaw's snap is good. 10 37 mark, Melvin second quarter. Jalen Mergerson, 22 yard scamper and good. into Pater. And the Raptors. Eagle Crest has Remain themselves perfect. a 7 0 lead in this football game. So, can A West counter? We'll find out. Take a break right now. Here from Legacy Stadium. Be right back. So Mergerson scores for Eagle Crest, and we have a 7-0 ball game here at Legacy Stadium in Aurora for the A-Town Game of the Week. Raptors in black, booting it to A. West, wearing the white and the familiar purple. Return, Wildcats. Hooked around the neck and brought down across the 20-yard line is Chase Dixon. And so Johnny Crutch, Chase Dixon, Joey Perez and the offense will come out and try to get the answer. A couple of really good-looking series for Arvada West so far in this game. Getting across midfield each time. But one time, the interception, another, a punt. 
unable to get on the scoreboard, and then Jalen Mergerson just scored for Eagle Crest, and that's where we sit 7-0. Eagle Crest with the lead. Ball on the ground. That's going to be recovered by Eagle Crest. Recovered and there's those the turnovers Rutgers. that A. West Recovered cannot afford to offer. Ja'Kai Thurman. Second turnover of the game. Forty-two Thomas Holt on my roster. After the fumble, and what a nice position to be in if you're an Eagle Crest Raptor fan. One play, fumble for A. West. Now Eagle Crest, the plus 20, rolling to the far side. There's an open man, receives it, and then punches it across Mergis quickly, complete to fair, converting the turnover. Jimenez. And a touchdown for Eagle touchdown Crest. Baron Sandoval Jimenez with the 20 yard touchdown reception just like that Eagle Crest took so long to get the football and now they have two touchdowns on the scoreboard and Sandoval Jimenez will stay out there the lefty gonna boot the PAT here comes the attempt solid good 18, the star in the last minute. And the Third, Sandoval Jimenez with a touchdown reception, 20 yards out. Converts the PAT. It's a 14-0 lead for the Eagle Crest Raptors. Give us a moment, we'll stay here to talk about the story of the Eagle Crest under seventh year head coach Mike Schmidt. Undefeated right now, 9-0 overall. They've already clinched the Mount Wilson Conference. They have the opportunity to finish up the regular season undefeated for the first time in program history since 1993. By the way, footnote, asterisk, that was the year Eagle Crest won a state championship here in Colorado. That year, 93, they went 14 and 0, won the state title. The Raptors this year, similar style as the past couple of years. They had been making waves within what was then the Centennial Conference. Good fights with that tough league. As you see the return coming from Dixon, tries to get to the near side, can't get the block and eventually taken down. Good special teams play for Eagle Crest. Roger Bird. Tackle made on the return by number 42, Ja'Kai Thurman. So here we are, 10-15 on the clock. Dixon brings the ball out to the 22-yard line. After Eagle Crest scored within 30 seconds of each tally, a Mergerson 22-yard run, a 20-yard touchdown reception for Theron Sandoval Jimenez. Now the A-West Wildcats, who had been looking good offensively, have to play catch-up. You know, technically, Eagle Crest offensively still has just one first down. It came with the flag. Two splash plays, of course, both for touchdowns. Mergerson, Sandoval, Jimenez. Matt Youngblood also holding That fits what we're trying to describe. A. West with two long drives in their two opening possessions. Eagle Crest went three and out in their first possession and then didn't get the ball till the second quarter. But that's when the fireworks started for the Black Hats. Shot to the outside, setting up the screen, and that's going to be fairly successful, getting near the first down. 9.20 on the clock. That play from the 23, and we see the replay. Officials spot the ball at the 31 yard line. Or it'll be that was Cass, for the Wildcats. who did not get enough to get to the first down. You can see across the way, upper left hand part of your monitor. Less than a yard to go. So from the 31 yard line, here comes A. West. 
Cass is in the backfield, flanking Crutch. They will hand it to Cass. Ball is on the ground, can Cass get to it? It's up in the air and eventually collected by one of the Raptors, third turnover of the game. Fumble on the play, recovered by number 30, Elijah Anderson Taylor. So Anderson Taylor gets the football, second fumble recovery for the Raptors defense. Add the interception from Kyle Johnson, After three turnovers the fumble, in the first the half, and another nice setup for the offense Eagle. of Eagle Crest. 8.45 on the clock, second quarter. Will set up at the plus 33. Raptors good field position after the turnover. Ball spotted at the 33 yard line. Mergerson, one man behind him, he's going to hand it off. Put it in the belly of someone other than Wanting's ball on the ground. They match turnovers. Recovered by no Gavin Raptors McCurry. The carpet, recovered by the Arvada West, Gavin McCurry. He's a good specimen to look out if you like the football. Gavin McCurry, the 250-pound nose guard, noted for football. impact plays. He's got a lot of TFLs up there as far as statistically Ball's tops in the, the state. 33-yard line where the Wildcats will take over. Ball dropped, and look at McCurry, 13. He saw it, called ball, pounced on it himself. 33-yard line, A. West now with the football. And a handoff play. Perez taking the Far side, off. off tackle, going to Perez again. Got to stick with that. Combining on the stop, Quinton Bowen. Harrison Starr. Star 14 points on the board, the a lot of fireworks. Brings up second down. Otherwise, to go for the first. one play drives for Eagle Crest. Got four turnovers in the game. Eagle Crest had collected three. A West creating their first turnover. And that presented this situation with A West having the football. Second down and nine play. Perez, Perez again the via the run on a short game. We'll set the ball at the 38-yard line, third, third down, five yards to go for the and first. five coming up, 7.41 on the clock, second quarter. Those guys in white, Arvada West trailing 14-0. Trying to ruin what could be a very joyous evening, a historic evening for their opponents, the Eagle Crest Raptors, trying to go undefeated in the regular season for the first time since 1993. Another run play from A. West's offense. Tony Cass with the carry. Two, to the Tony Cass Spider across the 40-yard line. Fourth down play coming up. Will they snap it from scrimmage or punt? I see a change in personnel, so do you, on your screen. Thanks for joining us, not only in the state of Colorado, but technically across the globe. That's right, we worldwide. Uh huh. Stream at Sports Production here, the A-Town Game of the Week, brought to you by the Aurora Sentinel. We're live from Southeast Aurora, Colorado at Legacy Stadium. Arvada West will boot it. Garns will chase it down. Look for his first cut. Just goes up the seam, evades one defender. He's still alive. Breaks two tackles, gets to the 40-yard line. Victor Garns. Victor Garns with nearly 100 yards in punt returns here in the first the half. Territory. Stopped. Pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Or be first down for the Raptors. Tackle Score update for Trevor from SIS Northern Colorado. Pooter leading Highlands Ranch 24-21 in the third quarter. That's up at French Field in the FOCO. 6.32 on the clock here. Eagle Crest with the football. There goes Wantings for eight, nine yards. Kenny Wantings get a bulk, getting a bulk of the carries for the Raptors. Wanting who had, had some injuries early Austin on in the season. Jaden Vaughn was carrying the football the a lot early on. Wantings healed up, and the track star has been the go-to guy in the run game for Eagle Crest. Second down and three, 38-yard line. Up the middle, there goes Wantings. He's going to get Kenny a first down. Good for a Raptors first down. Tackle by Garrett Shipman, Garrett Shipman. the linebacker. 
So Eagle Crest attacking the attacking the bread and butter of the AOS defense. That D line, the front five, if you add two linebackers, really strong this season for Coach Brad Pyatt and his Purple Cats. First down and 10, 34 yard line, 544 on the clock. Quick toss. And a conservative reception by Eagle Crest. The senior, Tyler Peabody, gets it. Gains nine yards. Second down play coming up from the 25-yard line. Second and one, 5.15 on the clock. Second quarter, Legacy Stadium, Aurora. Fake the give, Mergerson up the middle, out the first down, he's got some more room to run. He evades two tacklers, gets close to the pylon, Mergerson won't get in, but another big run from the junior quarterback, Jalen Mergerson. Wildcat one yard line where the Raptors will have it first and goal. Belly option, call it the read, Mergerson runs it effectively. Kyle Wagner leading the Gain of 24 line. yards, Four Mergerson Raptors. sets up his offense at the one yard line. 454 and ticking here in the second. And we're gonna have a timeout. Referees want to take a quick pause to get one of their line judges in position. Right along the goal line. Makes sense. One yard play. Mergerson up the middle and he's stuffed. Boy, that's a great play defensively by James Wild Gold, 53, line. reading it well, shoots the gap, puts a hat on the quarterback. Charge led on the play by number 53, James Gold. Brings up second and goal for the Raptors. So second and one, Mergerson stays in the shallow gun, a West threatening blitz. Mergerson calls back Garns. Hands off to Vic Garns, who tries to push through, and that's not going to happen. Stout goal line defense by Arvada West. Raptors finding 46 in on the play for A. West. Garns, Jackson German. Brings up third down. Sophomore Four linebacker Raptors. that Coach Pyatt talks a lot about. 345 and counting here in the second. Eagle Crest looking to go up three scores in this football game. Mergerson is going to throw it this time. It's received well, and that's going to be a touchdown for Eagle Crest. Number two in the game for Theron Sandoval Jimenez, and the Raptors are up 21. Quick toss, Sandoval Jimenez instinctively gets inside position, takes it into the chest, makes one spin and across the goal line for his second touchdown of the game. I say 21, that'll be if Sandoval Jimenez hits this one, the point after attempt. It's gotta be fun for a kid. You get the score and it's gonna be a fake and it's going to be a toss and it will be a miss. Great opportunity good. for a defender to get two points, but it's not going to happen. So I set myself up, called 21, not the case, but still comfy is Eagle Crest, up 20 to nothing in this football game. Theron Sandoval Jimenez at 329 in the second quarter. His second score of the football game, second touchdown pass for Jalen Mergerson, who in total has three touchdowns. He had one on the run back at 10.37 in the first quarter. So Mergerson, three total TDs after his recent one-yard connection Red for a score to Theron Sandoval Jimenez. Dion's Restaurant. Dion's a proud sponsor of your Eagle Crest Raptors. Jimenez set to kick off from his 40-yard line. So after the five play drive that went 39 yards after the big Garns punt return again, Eagle Crest boots it away to Arvada West. And the Wildcats are gonna set up 
short of their own 15-yard line with 3.22 on the clock here in the second quarter. Christian Remeco on the stop for the Raptors. Thursday night football here around the state of Colorado. We are live from Aurora. Crutch this way, a lot of room and a block for Trevor Lepke, the senior. Pass complete nice play four, there by the Trevor A West Lepke. offense. Lepke's going to get a first down. First out of bounds on the play by number 12, Victor Garns. Result of the reception is a. So you look at the replay there, down. Lepke. Official spot the ball at the with a 12 yard run, gain. Another first down for A West. Look around quickly, play. scores legacy 20 to 7 over Westminster in the second quarter. Columbine 14 0 in the second over Thunder Ridge. Cherry Creek 34 0 over Montbello in the second. RC Mountain Vista 17 7, the Jaguars lead in the second. Handoff. Right up the middle. There's a good standoff. Deontay Christian stacking up. Christian and Perez. Field. That's fun. I'll call that out again. Can we have a repeat? Also assisting on the play number three. Christian Eric gets the James. tackle. Perez gets four yards. Ball set the up ball at the 33 yard line, line for A West. 249 on the clock in the Long second pass. quarter. Crutch. Flanked by Perez. Pass downfield. Open man makes one cut. And he's eventually chased down, but that's a Patches big gain for Trevor Lepke. Lepke. Coverage and tackle on the play by number 22, Bross Lee. There's the There's look. The Great instincts, too. Well, Felt the defender. The Lepke cuts to the inside to get near the 35 yard line, and that's where well, we're going to set it up. Four fresh tries to work with. 33-yard gain on the connection between Crutch and Lepke. Lepke, the go-to man here in this series for A. West, 217, second quarter. 35-yard line, first down play. Man coverage, boy, that's a nice piece of work by the cornerback for Eagle Crest. On the run and knocking it down. Play by number 11, John Hupel. Might hear the PA over the crowd, Mike. Incompletion brings the ball back to John Heupel making the play. As you look at the replay there, that's just man-on-man -man situation. Who's going to make the play? And that time it was number 11 for Eagle Crest. Meanwhile, Perez off tackle pushing through. He is fun to watch. Joey Perez takes the handoff. Three-year starter, Joey Perez, there. on the also second down play, picks up five. Quentin Bowen. Coach Pyatt talking about how Perez is getting looks from D1, D2, specifically with offenses that like big backs. So Perez has an opportunity to find a nice fit at the next level once he graduates. Perez, a senior. Perez carrying the football again. He breaks free and cut down at the knees by the free safety Victor Garns. And if you like watching Perez carry the football, look at the replay. Breaks the tackle, and then there's a couple of top talents in Colorado going after each other. You know, interesting, if you like watching Perez, he's only 90%. He had a knee injury start of the season. Missed a couple of games, had to have knee surgery. It was a meniscus injury suffered in June during camps. So that kid's only 90% and he does that. We like number one. Timeout called, 115 on the clock. If you want to engage with us on the Twitter, we do that. At Aurora Sports, if you want to see what Courtney's up to, he's floating around somewhere. At Stream at Sports, if you want to follow the production staff here, I'm at Marty Cesario. Good luck. And for the programs, at AV Wildcats. AV Wildcats or Wild at Cats Raptor set. Athletics and go ahead and direct tweet at Vince, the AD. 
Elijah Anderson Taylor says, not on my watch. Run play from A. West on a fourth down play and from the, the 26, and that's a stop down. the kind that a defense likes to make. Elijah Anderson Taylor, Taylor knifes through the gap and cuts down the running back. Ja'Kai so Thurman. a turnover on downs created by the defense of the Eagle Crest Raptors. This all fits why Eagle Crest is so good this year and remains undefeated. 27 yard line, 111 on the clock. The flip. Corey Corbin with an opportunity for a touch, but outstanding defense by Arvada West getting across the line of scrimmage. That's a big loss. Stop made on the play by number Timeout. Arvada West. There's a timeout called by A. West, and let me tell you why. It, it, what's happening and what you're watching fits what Eagle Crest is and why they've been able to evolve into an undefeated football team. Their program and the entire school always has athletes, skills players, guys that can carry the football. This year, the way personnel turned out, talked about this with Mike Schmidt, start of the year. You got to keep your linemen. You got to keep the big guys. You got to play tough. Can you run the football when it gets to November, when it comes to playoff time? They've got all those parts. Strong offensive line play. Remember how it works. Elijah Brockman, a D1 player, is headed to Air Force, along with Miller, Shaw, Ronish, Atterbury. You've got a defensive line that can play physical, like you would expect if you were in the Centennial League of your. Add that to some of the things you've seen from the offensive players that do work like Garns and Mergerson and Sandoval Jimenez. And you haven't been beaten yet. There's Garns right on cue. Gets across to the 28-yard line-ish. 53 seconds on the clock. It'll bring up second and long still. Eagle Crest is comfy. 20-0 lead. Garns is going to stay out on the football field to play the slot. You see far side. Third and nine, 28-yard line. Downfield with a man open over the top. That's a rare miss by Mergerson and his receivers in this first half of our football game at Legacy Stadium. Fourth down play coming up with 34 seconds on the clock. I thought maybe you kind of read Mergerson down on the field that Neil down on it, let clock tick. No, they're going to punt. So an opportunity for Tony Cass, who's far off to the right of your screen. He will receive for our battle west. Should be excellent field position for A West here. That'll be a tough one to handle. Nose of the football, hits the turf, and then bounces forward 10 yards. Sandoval's and will be set down at the 32-yard line, line to get something started here in the second period. John Hapel downing it. So not as good as field position as you might have thought. Considering where Eagle Crest was booting it away and with Cass waiting back there, just a low punt, end over end forward motion. Hits the turf and just too tough to handle and then it rolls and puts A West in this situation. 32 yard line with 23 seconds left here in the second quarter. Still to the pass, crutch, far side. And he's able to find Chase Dixon. Chase Dixon's a good story. We talked about his stats. He's going to have a 1,000-yard season if things pick up here, starting around 900 in this football game. But one of those kids who worked himself to earn his spot. Coach Pyatt describes him as the kind of kid who makes the tough catches, and you just saw that. On his knees, along the sideline, defender on his backside, still makes the catch, flags on the field, 16 seconds left. Props to the officiating crew. I wonder if they have any disc jockey background. They're hot on the mic, ready to jump on it. I'll have to pay attention. Stay sharp. Shut up. <laughs> 37-yard line. First down play coming up. 16 seconds left. Second quarter. A West trailing by 20. 
downfield crutch. There's a play made by Lepke all the way past the 20 yard line. Eight seconds on the clock. Pass complete to Trevor Lepke. What a nice first half by Trevor Lepke. With the tackle on the play. Forty-seven yard connection between Crutch and Lepke. Will they kick the field goal or make one play? We'll take a break, come back on the A-Town game of the week. So after the 47-yard play from Crutch to Lepke, nice position for A. West, eight seconds. They will run a play, just a toss to Dixon. Will he get to it? Had the opportunity, unable to receive the grab. The good thing is, is that it stops the clock, four seconds left, and here comes the field goal unit. Arvada West does now have an opportunity to put points on the board before they head south into the locker rooms here at Legacy Stadium. There's a look at the replay. Dixon had two steps. Couldn't focus entirely. Get a read on the football, can't make the catch. Set to attempt the 37 yard field goal number four, Trevor. So this will be a 37 yard attempt from the Wildcats. Pretty piece of work. Correction, Michael. And it's called off and no good. So a missed opportunity. That looks solid. Just a little bit off, though. So A West does not get points. And you see the score bug. Second quarter, a whole lot of Raptors. The Black Hats up 20, halftime here at Legacy Stadium.
halftime show. You can see on camera what a magnificent performance from the Eagle Crest High School Marching Band. They can play. Right now, the Raptors community is quite happy. Three touchdowns in the first half, all in the second quarter. And Eagle Crest up 20 to nothing, well on their way to achieving an undefeated regular season, which is a huge story for this football community. A-Town Game of the Week. Marty Cesario here with a special guest, Morgan Dizak from Chassa Now, which is content provided by the Colorado High School Activities Association. When I lead you right up to it, talking about Eagle Crest, uh, she's here to do a feature on the Eagles, Eagle Crest football team. And I just want to ask you from your perspective, you know, you're here to do a special story about this program. What is it that you're looking for to write about? What, why are you enticed and compelled to come here on this night at Legacy Stadium? And what are you going to talk about when you mention this football team and what they've done? Yeah, Marty. Well, um, Eagle Crest is, uh, you know, they're 9-0 right now. They're possibly going to have their second undefeated season in program history. Um, and they're... Uh, team title first uh league title since 1993 so they got a young team so i'm kind of looking at you know victor garns he's so unstoppable and then you know um their quarterback jalen mergerson too uh just a very young team so watching those uh, up and comer kind of dudes right so yeah. is that how you're going to build it is uh, talk about the program as a whole and then some of those uh, young guys you the do a good job with that you give the young guys some love some print yeah absolutely and i mean they got like what like five or six starting seniors this year too so i mean now who assigned you to come do this was this something where you get to make a pitch on a story that you want to do or did chassa say look we got a good thing going on head out there morgan we had actually been talking about doing a feature story on Eagle Crest for a couple weeks because they've been, you know, right. undefeated right. all season long. But, um, you know, there have been championship events going on, like softball. I was supposed to go cover the Eagle Crest game when they, you know, were going to be 7-0. and So this was really the perfect game, um, you know, last regular season game two before the playoffs. So um, it just really worked out uh, to cover this game here for their senior night too, even yeah. though they don't have a lot of seniors right. you know, out there. That's a great point. It is a special night. Uh, the senior night celebrations started before this football game, game commenced. So that's a big part of it too. I want you to do something though. Uh, last week I happened to cover Eagle Pass and all of a sudden Mike Schmidt and the, the football team busted out what I'm calling the Louisiana Nana. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome victory chant. If if somehow you can build in video or audio content into into your print piece, I mean, or, or even if it's just not going to be involved, you got to ask Mike Schmidt to the chair. Yeah, can see, you reenact can it? You, <laughs> what you it, witnessed? It, oh, it totally has like Bayou week. Cajun flavor. Na 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 na. Yeah. And Eagle Crest is coast to coast. They're the most, you know, something like that. It absolutely incredible. He's bringing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. New Orleans flair up here. Yeah, huh? kind of like, you know, I, I don't know if we, yeah, it, it's not hip hop. It's just more of that Cajun kind of soulful kind of thing. So ask him about that. Yeah. So, okay, look for that. How do I uh, get to read that feature? Yeah, this will be posted on chassanow.com later, and it will also be tweeted off the Twitter at chassa, C-H-S-A-A. -A. Nice. And then also look for Morgan personally at Morgan Dizak. M-O-R-G-A-N-D-Z-A-K. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks for visiting. Appreciate that. And I'm going to look for that piece on Thank the Eagle Crest Raptors. You're very, very welcome. You know what? We're going to do a photo shot. We'll do a photo op with Courtney, and we'll tweet that out, too, just for fun. There you go. All right. Morgan Dizak from Chassa now going to do a feature on Eagle Crest, who is right now enjoying themselves a nice night, up 20 to nothing at halftime. Can they complete the feat and finish the regular season undefeated? They're in a good spot. Up 20, and we have a third quarter coming up on the eight-town game of the week.
See the big graphic banners there. The Arvada West Wildcats visiting the Eagle Crest Raptors here at Legacy Stadium for the A-Town Game of the Week. 8-11 on the clock mountain time here in Southeast Aurora as we feel the chill coming with a slight south breeze off the Aurora Reservoir. What a nice first half for the Eagle Crest Raptors. Three touchdowns all in the second quarter. Mergerson with three total TDs and a 20 to nothing lead for the Eagle Crest Raptors. Marty Cesario along with Executive producer Phil Mildren, Dominic Serva, Alex Michael Wines, Gail Kekak with visuals and miles. technical direction in a little bit. will be visited by Courtney Oaks from the Aurora Sentinel. Always nice to visit with him. Nobody knows Aurora sports on the preps level like that guy. He's all over the place and he's got the knowledge. Courtney Oaks will be with us a little bit later on during the second half. Kickoff Arvada West. They'll boot the ball deep and smart away from Victor Garns. Problem out of bounds, so the flag goes on the field. Visual reset, Arvada West wearing white trimmed in the familiar purple out of Jefferson County. Eagle Crest, the Raptors, you see, got a chance for a second undefeated season. Their offense clicking. Top five in Class 5A, their defense, and that's the balance that produces an opportunity to finish a regular season undefeated. They've got the skills, they've got the athletes, but they've also got the toughness, and they've got a very good defense that has so far shut out their opponents. Eagle Crest with Mergerson leading the way, and I'll even have to correct myself, Victor Garns is going to receive the football on this opening snap of the second half. Just getting started, third quarter, Garns keeps it. And good defense, knifing through Connor Jack Aury, the, the linebacker, the senior, doing a great job. Arvada West, Wildcats, their best victory Jack total Aury. this decade. Six and three overall right now. Play brings up second down Got an all-time 1-0 record versus Eagle Crest, by the way. These two teams, last meeting was in 2005 and that was in round one of the playoffs a west stacked under head coach casey coons won 63 21 different story this evening as victor garns carries victor the garns football taking the handoff after a one yard loss a first down gain from number 12. look at the starters for eagle crest i just mentioned victor garns not technically listed as starter but we're going to hear about him corey corbin corbin on the outside mergerson has three total tds including two touchdown passes to theron sandoval jimenez atterbury brockman the offensive line have been studs all season long leading the way Wanting's carrying the football, first down play from the 48. And that'll be a seven or eight yard pickup. Let's look at the defensive starters once again for Arvada West. German, Auri, I just mentioned. A couple of studs. Jack Boyer is a great story. Has some size, 6'5 along the D line. Shipman McCurry, a couple of guys who lead the way. And the best player on Arvada West, maybe Tony Cass, playing in that defensive backfield. Second out and two, 44-yard line, just getting started in the third quarter. There goes Mergerson on the run again, and that'll be another Mergerson first down, down for the Black Hats the down to the from Eagle Crest High School. A first down in Wildcats. Mergerson, 12-yard gain, balls at the 32. 20-point spread in favor of Eagle Crest, wearing the black, trimmed in red. Downfield, opportunity, and just a little too long as they tried to get the football to Peabody, who had a couple of nice catches in that first half. Second down and 10 play coming up, 10-17 on the clock, third quarter here at Legacy High School. Conclusion of this game, our A-Town player of the game, brought to you by the AuroraSentinel.com. Look around for all the fabulous content, not only from Mr. Oaks, but the rest of his colleagues at the Aurora Sentinel. Right now, it's kind of up in the air. I think quarterback is a nominee. Two touchdown passes, one via the run. Victor Garns, always in the mix. There he goes, breaks free. Victor Garns is going to have himself a 32-yard touchdown Victor to give Eagle Crest a four-score lead. There's the replay. Met at the second level. 
Garnes spins out of it, runs away from another arm tackle attempt. And it's just that easy for Vic Garnes. That's been the case all year long. Await the PAT attempt from Sandoval Jimenez. 26. And hands in the air, 27-0 lead for the Eagle Crest Raptors. That fits, too, because there's a young man with the last name Pyatt. That's the head coach, Brad Pyatt, across the way. He was joking. He said on game tape, my son, who came over and talked to us, my son was checking out game tape. He fell in love with Vic Garns, and he wanted to see and meet number 12, is how he referenced him once they got to the football field tonight. Vic Garns has impressed a lot of people here in the state of Colorado, and I personally, you know, in terms of marketing our best athletes, I don't think we talk about the kid enough. I know we talk about him a lot here in state, but I think he's earned it. He has the ability. He is a top talent, and we should probably talk more. Chase Dixon. That kid is also a pretty good basketball player for Coach Olander. Vic Garns, him playing defensive back at the D1 level somewhere. I'd like to see it in the Mountain West, personally, if that's a fit. Return A West, pretty strong at the start. And then at the 25-yard line, then a nice return by Corey Kerrigan. Sandoval Menez puts shoulder to shoulder and pushes him out of bounds, but Kerrigan gets to the 25-yard line, which is where A-West will set up down 27 points. Well, one thing we talked about, A-West, hey, they're the underdog. They know it. Very nice season, but they're going up against an undefeated team. They couldn't commit turnovers. Well, Eagle Crest defense forced three of them in the first half. And that was a big catalyst to what the Raptors had done in that first half to create a 20 to nothing lead here in the second half, 10.08 mark. So just around two minutes into the third quarter, Garns breaks free for 32 yards. And that's why we sit at 27 to nothing. By number 30, so Perez for three to start out this series for the Arvada so West Wildcats. The Wildcats. Balls at the 28-yard line, 934 on the clock. As Crutch, who has shown some of his magnificent skills in this game, specifically it tosses to Lepke. Trevor Lepke having a nice game. Here comes a creative play call. And then a nice decision by Kerrigan. Wasn't there, so he tucked the ball. Advanced forward for a few yards. Almost a first down. There's Kerrigan. Just wasn't there for 22, so he made the smart play. Coach Brad Pyatt and his offensive staff come up with some new things for us. At the 35 yard line. And they did give the first down to Kerrigan on the run, so gain of seven. First down, 35 yard line, 9.13 on the clock for Mr. Crutch in his A West offense. Back to the run game. Tony Cass, Tony Cass with the carry. trying to get away Tackle and unable to do so. By Ja'Kai Thurman. Well, spotted at the 38-yard line. It'll be second down, seven yards to go for the first. So linebackers making plays for the Eagle Crest defense. Still a three-yard gain to get things going for Mr. Tony Cass. Second down play, 38-yard line for Arvada West in the white and the purple. Crutch, quick toss outside. Simple connection to Chase Dixon. In terms of reception totals, Dixon's having himself a nice game. Touchdown on the play by number 11. Our Jamie statistician Hill. is third and short for the on sabbatical, taking a trip to faraway lands, so we don't have the official stats. Dixon, I my guess, seven or eight catches in this football game. Would put him over 70 for the year. Push up the middle. Is Arvada West going to get the first down? Yes is the answer. 
Tony Cass with the strong leg drive. Cass is carried good for a Wildcat first There down. he is. He's met in the middle and then drives through the back of Jackie one of his own Wynn offensive linemen. Credit the push from the D-line. That's Jackie Wildcat Wynn, 79. But nevertheless, a first down pickup. So a couple of first downs for A-West. And then downfield, man. Coverage. Dixon almost with the circus catch. And a great piece of work defensively. John Heupel. John Hupel with the coverage on the play. I'm going to correct myself, John Hupel. Brings up second down. I can trust the public address announcer. So Hupel with nice coverage, and it falls incomplete. 7.40 oh, on the clock, third the quarter. 47-yard line will be second and 10 for the Wildcats. A. West started this football game controlling field position and time on the clock, holding the football. Their opening series advancing to the 48th and then the 37-yard line. And here's a run for Cass. He's getting through, gets across the 40, not yet. So there's a nice run for Tony Cass. And tackle Cass made on the play by Thomas Holt. 42, Holt makes the tackle. Kai Thurman with the tackle, also assisting number 12, Victor Garns. Garns comes up. Wildcats in Raptor territory with a fresh set Again, of my favorite part of watching Victor Garns work on a football field is from the free safety position. Not only big impact, explosive plays, interceptions, fumble recoveries, but also just how he works reading the entire field and coming up to make plays like he just did there. Still a first down pickup on the cast run. Center screen set up. And it's blown up by the Eagle Crest defense, trying to get it to Kerrigan. Second down. Coming up from the 41-yard line. So AOS with three first downs collected on this series. Their first possession of the second half, even seven minutes on the scoreboard clock here at Legacy Stadium in Aurora. Eight town game of the week. 27 nothing lead for Eagle Crest defending right now. Downfield to the passing game and there's Lepke again who is having a magnificent ball game. The senior finishing off his high school career in style. Here's a replay. Deep gun, crutch downfield under pressure. Gets it to Lepke who's brought down at the 26-yard line. The 26 so another first down for Arvada West. Brad Pyatt's crew has found a little something for themselves. Can they finish? They've been deep on two other occasions in terms of offensive series. Unable to finish it off. To Cass on the reverse. He gets across the 25 down to the 22. Methodically moving downfield until Kyle Johnson, the defensive back, able to make the tackle. Kyle Johnson to Kai Thurman combining on the stop. Set that ball at the 22, so a four-yard gain. Whole lot of action there. A couple of touches between Crutch and then eventually Cass. 5.50 on the clock, third quarter. Arvada West looking for their first score of the football game. Crutch, handoff, Perez, blast. And eventually taken down by Elijah Brockman. Joey Perez, the ball carrier. Brockman, 51, left side of the screen, and then you'll see him make the tackle on this replay. Brockman. Perez is so fun to watch. Again, playing at about 90% with the knee. Carry short of a Wildcat first down, brings up third down. And one we don't mind barking Rockets. out hype for number one wearing the white jersey. With some opportunities to play at the next level someday. He's a senior. Third down and one play from the 17 yard line. To the air, downfield, open man and a catch. Touchdown for Chase Dixon and the Arvada West Wildcats. Crutch's pass complete to number 11, Chase Dixon, and the Wildcats on the board. Like that call, 
And you see the talented wide receiver Chase Dixon beating his man by four or five steps. Great recognition by Crutch. 17-yard touchdown reception for Chase Dixon at the 449 mark in the third quarter. That is Dixon's 10th touchdown reception of the season. Vandenberg's kick is up and good. The PAT is converted successfully by Michael Vandenberg, the sophomore. And so, A. West is on the board. A 75-yard drive. Ten plays finished off by Johnny Crutch to Chase Dixon for 17 yards. And some life for the Purple Cats from Arvada West. Looking across at the sideline there, you see some exchanges, some dap pump, high five. I can do that, of course. Michael They've got game face still. They know they're down 20 points. That did to receive Victor Garns. A. West going to kick off from the 40-yard line. Eagle Crest kick John return Eagle team now retreats. With Garns. Deep is Hupel and Garns. Go to Hupel. Looks for a block. Center wedge. Bowls over one of the special teamers. And gets to the 26-yard line. a nice return out to the 25-yard line, and the Raptors will take over. There's a look at the defensive player returning the football. I still like the contact with the ball or without. Aaron and Deal Eagle Nico Crest up 20 now. Will set up at the minus 31-yard line. As Jalen Mergerson is out on the football field. Remember previous series, Victor Garns was taking snaps. Start off the opening season, or the opening series for Eagle Crest in the third quarter. Mergerson, two touchdown passes, also a touchdown run. This is a pass over the top. Opportunity for a D back, makes the catch. What a pretty play! A highlight from Tony Cass with the interception for Arvada West. Chucha changes. If you get that, that's for Dad. Thin White Duke reference, you got it, right, Dad? Okay. You can scratch your head if you're a junior. <laughs> I, what, what's he talking about? Maybe a change in momentum here. Touchdown for Arvada West. Previous series, now the interception by Tony Cass. 41 yard line, first down and 10. Downfield. Matching the interception, Vic Garns can't get away, dropped at the nine. Crutches swing pass to Kerrigan. So after you thought momentum might have changed, Arvada West getting the offensive score, collecting the interception. The flea flicker attempt. This time, Kerrigan goes downfield and there's the read. Playing the open space, Vic Garns with a pick in this football game. More of that productive balance from Vic Garns we've come to know. He's got an interception, and he's also got himself a 32-yard touchdown reception. Meanwhile, Wantings from the 10. Kenny Wantings running hard out to the 20-yard line. Right at the Eagle Crest has forced four turnovers. Arvada West has collected two. Total of six turnovers in this football game. Again, we knew that Arvada West, the underdog, could not afford to give the football away. They were going to have to play as close to air free as they could to wanting, wanting have good work and success against a team like Eagle Crest here in 2016. 354 on the clock. Wanting's carries. Picked up a first down previous rushing attempt, this time just two yards. Ball set at the 22, 342 on the clock, third quarter. Eagle Crest up 20 with the football, second and eight. 
Blitz threatened, here it comes. Picked up well by the offensive line. Mergerson rolling, keeps it, evades tacklers, gets the first down. Jalen Mergerson on foot. Impressive. Takes it around the left side. Run out of bounds by number 49, Jack Yuri. Have to point out Max Shaw. Along with Miller and Ronish, that center blitz right up the gut, picked up easily by those offensive linemen of Eagle Crest. And eventually a 11-yard first down run by Mergerson. Bouncing, wanting, gets to the outside. Can he run away? Gains sideline, makes one move, still alive. And across the 45-yard line, another first down for the Raptors. Kenny Wanting showing some speed around the outside. Look Here's at Wanting's. 47-yard line where the Raptors outruns one defender. Doesn't elect to go out of bounds. Making plays. Kenny Wanting's. Part of that successful 4x100 team that went to state championships in the spring. Along with Jaden Vaughn. 254 on the clock, 47 yard line, first down and 10. Downfield Mergerson. No, he goes through the short route. Mergerson's and he makes the connection. Jimenez. Sandoval Jimenez with a reception. The 47 yard line. Tyler Sandoval Jimenez has two the touchdown catches in this football Raptors. game. That was back at the 10-22 mark in the second quarter to make it 14-0. That was for 20 yards. And then also a one yard touchdown reception at the 329 mark in the second quarter. Six down or six yard gain. And now Garnes is gonna throw downfield. Looking for Sandoval Jimenez. White jerseys waiting. Another interception for the defense of Arvada West. That's a pick for Aaron D'Amico. 24 of the Wildcats. Aaron D'Amico. Garnes didn't recognize all those defenders. Tough position for Sandoval Jimenez. D'Amico makes a play and comes down with it. Third turnover forced by the Arvada West defense. 2.10 on the clock, set the ball at the 20-yard line. First down play coming up, and here comes Arvada West with Crutch leading his offense again. Handoff Perez up the middle. There's my man Keontae Perez Christian taking the ball, making a play. The play by Christian. I've enjoyed the work of Christian, 49, for the defense of Eagle Crest Taylor. throughout the year. And, you know, I always hint to these kids, second and eight for the Wildcats. when I hype you, don't think that I don't source other people to find out if you deserve it off field. Heard so many great things from the athletic director about Keontae Christian and what a good kid he is. So we park out 49 when he makes a play, as he just did. Gain of two by Perez. Fake to Perez that time. Crutch to the far side on a short route. A six yard down and out. And that's going to fall incomplete. Third and eight coming up. John Hupel, Bross Lee on the coverage. Brings up third and Good defense from Hupel from playing that cornerback position across the way. Third down and eight for Arvada West from the 22, 129 third quarter, eight town game of the week. When we flip sides, we'll be joined by Courtney Oaks from the Aurora Sentinel to inform us about not only football and what's going on, but also a lot of activity in Aurora from the volleyball squads. Downfield looking for Dixon and a little too long that time. So a fourth down coming up, down, down 20, Wildcats. but considering field position at the 22, A. West is going to boot it. Just not making the completions, but you know you got to give some love to an undersized offensive line that's headed by Casey Coons. Those guys, uh, they're not too big down there for A. West. But they haven't allowed a sack. Eagle Crest Correction. is going to enjoy Number that punt Trent as it goes out of bounds. We'll have to see where they set it. But that'll be this a short punt from the 22. Yard line where the Raptors if they set it at the 38, that is a net 
16 yard punt. When you're up 20, you definitely enjoy a short punt like that that will set you up at the 38 yard line. The plus 38 is where Eagle Crest will start. Two backs flanking Murgison there. First down play. 119 left in the third quarter. Right up the middle, off tackle, plenty of space for Wantings. Keeps the play alive and then bounced out at the 25 yard line. Okay, Wantings wanting playing strong First and thick. Not a very big Rizzo. kid. Showing some toughness. Also assisting on play 49, Jack Yuri. There is a penalty marker on the field. Like the line play for Eagle Crest on that one there. I think it's one of the guys That's rotating in, Maddie Youngblood. Number 13 on the defense. You have to listen to the ball. Push down Eagle Crest. So after the whistle, infraction called against Arvada West. It would have been a first down for Keith Wantings on the nice run. He will add yardage to the nice run of Wantings. Takes the ball down to the 12 yard line where it'll be first so, and 10 for the Raptors. Sum them up together. Balls at the 12 yard line. There goes Mergerson running the football across the five yard Jay line. Mergerson takes it down to the Eventually tackled line. by Matthew Andrande. Shipman with the tackle on the play. Official spot the ball at the four yard line. Garrett Shipman also involved on the play. That's an eight yard pickup for Mergerson on the run. Set the ball at the four yard line. Clock is ticking at 44 seconds. Left in this third stanza of our A Town game of the week at Legacy Stadium in Aurora. Second down play. Go to the run game. Keith Wantings has himself his first touchdown of the football game. Touchdown 2-7 Eagle Crest with their fifth TD of the football game. Wantings following that right side of the O-line. Ronish and Atterbury. Much success for Eagle Crest. Getting set to hold on the extra point. Matt Shaw on the line set to snap the ball. Sandoval Jimenez up and it is good. Jimenez kick is up and good and the Raptors special team. So Arvada West had the momentum oh, to start this third quarter scoring. To follow up and counter a Vic Garns 32 yard touchdown in the first two minutes of the third but Arvada West clearly had taken over momentum. A 17 yard touchdown reception for Chase Dixon at 449, then the interception by Tony Katz. You thought, okay, here comes the Wildcats. But then right after the Cass pick, Vic Garns with an interception. And that kind of stopped the momentum, exchange of possessions. And eventually, after the short punt of 16 yards, set up Eagle Crest at the plus 38. Nice runs by Wantings, and it was appropriate that it was Keith Wantings who finished up that drive. A four-yard touchdown run for Keith Wantings. His first of the game in a 34-7 lead, as you can see. And is set to kick off. Raptors Matthew. will kick it with 28 Four. seconds left in the third quarter now. Kerrigan. Just a shorty to the 45. Nice reaction by Ryan Brown, who will set it down. All the way Here down comes the Arvada West offense again. The Wildcats. So Eagle Crest, as we're looking forward to Courtney Oaks to join us, the upcoming fourth quarter, Eagle Crest looking good, and that's part of why we want Courtney Ryan on to get Brown his perspective on, on what I think we're going to eventually Wildcats. witness here that Eagle Crest is Wildcats. going to finish the season undefeated. It looks that way right now. You know it's football. You've watched a lot of games. Anything can happen. There's a talented group of offensive individuals for A West out there including that guy Perez is, tries to battle through the interior of the Eagle Crest defense. Perez finds some tough sliding up the middle. Keontae Christian versus Joey Perez in the hole by number 49. Perez Keontae gains Christian. two. Brings up second down 
for the Wildcats. And I don't Cats. think we're going to get a snap, and we will flip sides. See, Crutch is going to hurry up here. Two seconds, and they do take the snap. Perez gets another carry, and he'll be Perez stopped. stopped for a short game in the play, and that's the end of period number three here at Legacy Stadium. So Harrison Starling makes the tackle. We will flip sides. Our Battle West will have a third down coming up here on Jackie the A-Town Game of the Week. With the tackle on the play for the Raptors. Fourth quarter, third down play. Arvada West, crutch to the air, downfield, open man. He finds, guess who? Trevor Lepke. Once again, big gain, collecting the first down, getting near the red zone for Arvada West. Here they come. Lepke is finding spaces along the seams and beating defenders. He's been doing that all night long. Just need some more of other things with the offense of Arvada West. So set the ball at the 23, again to the air. Man coverage, Dixon! Can't come down with it. Pass incomplete. I like that matchup too, Dixon, Dixon against Kyle Johnson. Ball falls incomplete, Kyle second out play coming up from the 23 yard line. Joined by Courtney Oaks from the Aurora Sentinel. The preps editor, publisher, journalist. <laughs> <laughs> He's a do-all guy. Courtney, who's been covering Aurora sports for, what is uh, your resume? Is it up to 15 oh, years now? It is. Decade and it a half covering. It's a beautiful piece of work by Phil and his crew. Oh, definitely. Pass to Cass on that far side screen, picked up nicely by Purchase Kyle pass. Johnson and also Elijah, Elijah Anderson, Anderson Taylor has had a nice game. So up 27 points, uh, I think we're walking into a, a great possibility for Eagle Crest to complete the feat. What's your perspective on what this football team has done throughout 2016? This is just a, a fantastic season. There's nothing more you can say about this. Um, they've been building for years, just building a, a culture and a mentality in all of these players, and it's all coming to fruition right now. Third down play, Crutch going to pass to the near side, and he finds Lepke once again. That'll be short of the first down, fourth down play coming up. What do you think it is that made Eagle Crest different this year than previous years to what looks like earn an undefeated regular season? Oh, I, I think a lot of it is just a, a maturity and experience from some of those younger guys. I mean, um, you know, they got a, a taste of it last year playing in the Centennial League before they uh, were taken out of that. And, uh, and I think they just grew up a whole lot last year. And. And the, the hunger was fired, uh, you know, fired a little bit as it was the season before on that uh, memorable loss to Ralston Valley in the playoffs. They do have uh, a little bit of nasty in them, and I say that nicely because it, it's that chip, but it's it's kind of a, a happy, jovial chip about <laughs> them in their way. Arvada West passing the football down to Chase Dixon from the 16-yard line, and he hands touchdown. up in the air. Yes. Wildcats. Chase Dixon has his second complete. touchdown reception Chase of the football Dixon game. 10:41 mark, fourth game. quarter. Chase Dixon now has 11 TDs in his senior season. Here's the replay coming up. We'll wait for the PAT. So Arvada West gets its second score offensively in this football game. Corey. Set to hold we'll wait for Vandenberg to attempt to kick it through. Michael Vandenberg set to kick. You see glimpses of Arvada West, and there it was right there on that play. Dixon's going to graduate, but 
They're going to be led by Johnny Crutch, who's a special quarterback and just a sophomore. Successful PAT will keep it here so we can talk more with Courtney Oaks. And I want to ask you, not only, you know, they're performing on the football field, they've got that little chip, little anger. You made a reference to a couple of years ago where, you know, Halfway through the playoffs, some shenanigans going on, a little bit of chaos, whatever, depending on who you're rooting for. But a you know, 56-yard field goal in the rain to knock them out of the playoffs. That was a special team back then with Elijah Ross running the football. But this year's team, you know, with the toughness, the execution, with the skills, players, but there's also a likability with this team. <laughs> What is it? What, I, I mean, I, I'm, I can't nail it down, but what do you think it is that makes them so likable? They do have personalities. That is, that is for sure. Um, we did a preseason media day, brought in a couple of the guys, and, uh, you know, Elijah Brockman is a, is a just a fun guy. He's committed to Air Force. And, you know, Jalen Murderson just has that confident air. There's not a lot of cockiness there. There's just this supreme confidence and trust in what they want him to do and uh, in trust in his guys. I mean, I, I could tell those guys were close, uh, close-knit. Uh, four of them came in to talk to us. Uh, we had Bross Lee, uh, defensive back, and Quentin Bowen as well, Elijah and Jalen. And, um, you know, those guys were just great. Uh, uh, you can just tell that there was this. There is a chemistry there. There's something that, you know, as they say, you want to play for the other guys, and they all do. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes it feels like cliche when coaches talk about that. That you know, that chemistry word, or there's something special going on with the aura. They they do have it when you're on field, when you visit with coach and the players. I, you know, it, it just, they emote that, and it's kind of engaging. As we see Keith Wanting's carrying the football, downfield block nicely by, I'm trying to pick up the number so I can give him some love, 63. Bear Miller getting downfield. It was a look at the replay. There you go, Bear, all the way downfield. So a four-yard pickup by Keith Wantings as we'll continue the drive that started at even 50-yard line. So set it up at the plus 46 for Mergerson and his crew. You know, and adding to what Courtney's talking about with their personality and, you know, their, their togetherness charisma they have. As you look at Mergerson, far side, rolling out, looking downfield. Had his man a little too long. But last week, you know, I was covering that, their victory over Ralston Valley. Then they top it off where they finish up the football game, beat a very good Jeffco program. And over to the left of us, all the cameras, and we're waiting for interviews. They bust out what I'm calling the Louisiana Na Na, this victory chant that was just, I mean, we were, it, it made us drop our jaws, and it just added to, you know, our impressions of them. Have you seen them do that I, I have before? not actually seen them do that yet, so I am looking forward to that at the end of this one. Well, Coach Mike Schmidt said it, it's something that his old coach in Louisiana used to do only in special days, and they felt like that one was that night. I think they were aware A-West had lost, so they'd won the conference title. But it was a, like a soulful Bayou Cajun victory chant, and it was absolutely beautiful on camera. I wouldn't expect anything less from, again, it fits. from Mike. Yep. yep. And, and they love to play for him. You can, you can definitely tell that. Good point. You can tell it, right? First down, 10 play, 39-yard line. Mergerson fakes, and now he's going to go on foot, and it's pretty successful. Usually when he runs the football, eventually brought down just short of the 30-yard line. We're being visited by Courtney Oaks from the Aurora Sentinel, the preps editor. second down for the Raptors. For the Sentinel. Go to aurorasentinel.com to see all his published works. He'll have a piece coming out on this game. As you see, Eagle Crest staying alive on that pass connection and getting downfield. Corey Corbin. Now, Courtney, you're covering a whole bunch of stuff. Not only are you dialed into this football game, but there's a lot of things happening even this Thursday night, right? Uh, sure. Just came over here from the state gymnastics meet, which uh, has expanded to three days now instead of two, uh, as it used to be. So 5A was getting their chance to uh, compete in the team competition um, earlier today at Thornton High School. And uh, Overland uh, co-op team, which is uh, made up of uh, gymnasts from all across Aurora and a couple of schools uh, on the fringes, 
um, was having a pretty fantastic start. They're undefeated this year and, and aiming for that state championship. So haven't yet seen the final results on that, but uh, they got off to a fantastic start. And uh, Coach Lisa Sparrow does an awesome job with that group. Mergerson from the 43-yard line. The long play for Corey Corbin that got within the five-yard line was called out via flag. Mergerson with a big run from the 43 is going to get a first down. There's the work of Mergerson. You know, it's fun about Overland Gymnastics. I love it when sports I don't cover never touch. But if I have awareness, I think that says something about your program, right? I know about Overland Gymnastics, and it seems like they're doing well, right? Yes, oh, sure. certainly. They uh, they lost, uh, actually, their top all-around gymnast uh, to injury from last year, and uh, another senior who had been a three-time state participant. Uh, both were injured and unfortunately unable to compete, but it's just next gymnast up, I guess, in that program, <laughs> how you would say it. That's fair. 19-yard run by Mergerson. First down 10, 24-yard line. Run game, Eagle Crest with the 20-point lead, 8.35 on the clock. What else is going on in the city of Aurora? What are you tracking? What else? Uh, we've got uh, soccer playoffs coming up. So, uh, quarterfinals are on Saturday. Grandview's the only team that won um, out of the four Aurora teams that were left. So. Uh, Graham, you got a 2-0 win over Bear Creek on this exact same field that we're uh, at right now, last night. Um, so the Wolves are on to face undefeated Boulder, second-seeded Boulder on uh, Saturday. So that's going to be a doozy. 8.07 on the clock. Mergerson's going to roll this way and look downfield. And that'll fall incomplete intended target, Corey Corbin. Okay, so back to football. You have something else Volley to add? Volleyball as well. Let's not forget volleyball. Yeah, I uh, cannot forget volleyball. <laughs> we got five Aurora teams in action, uh, including Rangeview will be at uh, Denver East tomorrow. Uh, Cherokee Trail, uh, hoping to defend their state championship, has a real tough task up in Fort Collins against number one Fossil Ridge. But, uh, you know, with the six or seven seniors back from last year's state run, I wouldn't put it past them to, uh, to make it interesting up there, I would, uh, I would definitely say. Yeah, that could happen out of that CT crew. Third and four, 19-yard line. Wantings trying to bust out of the pack there. He's going to get a first down, or at least close to it. Wait for the official. Look at the run there by Wantings. Does get across the 15-yard line, so another first down pickup. 7.54 remaining in this football game. 20-point lead for Eagle Crest. So I'm trying to do the math. How many volleyball teams in Aurora are hosting regions? Uh, none of them. They're actually Zero. all on the road. That's yes, rare. This is a very, very rare case. Uh, everybody played some very loaded schedules, and um, we're dealing with a lot of, uh, you know, graduation and and those sorts of things. And so um, the highest seeded team we had was Gran uh, Grandview at 18. So um, so they, everybody's got to go on the road. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of talent still there. And again, all, all of the teams around here have played incredibly tough schedules. So I think that will come to bear here. And, uh, and you know, Roar has a long tradition at uh, the state tournament. So we'll see if that can continue this year. That is definitely a historical anomaly for not one of the Aurora volleyball squads to be hosting a region. That's the truth. <laughs> Eagle Crest on the move, 11 yard line, and they'll move forward half the distance, 731 on the clock with a 20 point lead. The Raptors are indeed well on their way. Inside the red zone, up 20, looking for their First conference championship, what they've already secured. First undefeated regular season since 1993. As you've done research on that, Courtney, I, I, I mean, is there anything that stands out? Because you're going to build the story, right? Uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, I had a chance a few years ago to do a retrospective on uh, on the history of each of the Aurora schools looking back to their very beginning. And Eagle Crest, uh, looking back at that 93 season, and Ron Peterson, uh, you know, coaching that team up, and uh, I hear all these assistant coaches uh, around Aurora, uh, Jasper Armstrong, others um, that uh, that were great players back in their day, and have, have stayed around here and are helping to uh, make teams around here better, even now. 
And that was also interesting because it was the first and only All Aurora Championship game as they played Hinkley for the championship. That's good stuff. And of course, the, the climate, the landscape has completely changed since 1993, without a doubt. As you watch Victor Garns get his second touchdown of the football game. So now an interception and two touchdowns for number 12, Victor Garns. Eagle Crest has eclipsed the 40-point plateau in this football game. And with 6.48 on the clock, Sandoval Jimenez boots it through. 41 to 14 is the lead here. I think uh, it's fair to say Courtney's uh, he's going to be able to finish up that, that concept piece on what Eagle Crest has done. That's, that's outstanding. So look for that at aurorasentinel.com. Not only the gamer, the game recap of this football game, but also I'm sure there's something special coming from Courtney Oaks in oh, sure. terms of a written piece. Mm -hmm. And I, I like all the history stuff because, uh, you know, I, I'm not a native. I went to college up north. What, I was there 86 to 92. Don't do the math. You'll embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I did overtime. <laughs> But then went away, came back in 99. So, I, you know, I wasn't around in the metro area back in 93. So I like to hear all that historical stuff from Courtney Oaks. And then that'll move forward to what these guys have done. Something incredible. They're going to finish undefeated in this regular season again. First time since 1993. Hey, I know you got to go cover stuff. So we'll let you go do that. Cool. Sure. Yeah. You want to hang out for some I more? I got a few more minutes. Okay, well, talk let's, more, let's more keep football. Courtney. Okay, let's talk more football. Then let's talk about tomorrow. A sure. whole lot of uh, Aurora football teams are active, sure. and this is the last regular season week. So sure. so what's going on on Friday? Uh, Cherokee Trail will be taking on Pomona um, at the NAC. That'll be a fun one. Cherokee Trail right now is number 16 in the RPI, and as we've seen the way the RPI works, even if they lose, they'll probably move up a few spots which would put them into the playoffs again. Um, of course, you know, league winners are automatically in, so we'll see how if any of them are ranked below 16 uh, and if that will change the rankings. But, um, yeah, that's a big one. Um, you know, if CT can get a win there, that would be enormous. That would be a big uh, upset. That program. But, uh, but that, that's looking fairly decent uh, for them to make the playoffs as well. Um, Regis is playing Bear Creek, and Bear Creek is 17 in the RPI. And, uh, of course, that will that will help Bear Creek as well because Regis is in the top three. I can't remember exactly where they are in the RPI, but that will help them as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in that 16, 17 spot if right. there's any change. Um, but uh, also, uh, in 3A, Vista Peak, which is currently 18th in the 3A RPI, is at Palmer Ridge in a game that I believe they still have a chance to win their league with a victory. Um, they lost to TJ by one point last week, uh, which was a big one. Um, and, but uh, Palmer Ridge is, I think, 10th or 11th in the RPI, so it should benefit them as well. Now, whether it can get them up two spots to get back into number 16 uh, and get their first ever playoff spot, I don't know, but uh, those are the biggest three, uh, you know, in terms of implications tomorrow. Way to draw it up, too. Nice sell, Courtney. So tomorrow, CT on the edge in terms of RPI. There's only 16 seats. They're at 16, playing the top-ranked team in the state in Class 5A. That would be a, a huge upset. And, the, you know, nice story, too, after losing their head coach from last year with the Cougars. Sure. As you see the pass downfield from Crutch has an open man. That's Dixon making a play on the football, and it falls incomplete. 6.30 on the clock here in the fourth quarter with a sizable lead for Eagle Crest playing defense. And then, hey, I like to throw that in there. Bear Creek, it, we know what RJ is, their top ten, but Bear Creek sitting on the edge yeah, in RBI. I don't know so many now they, they knew that they were working did, right there. I did not. Uh, so right there, yeah, that one's a, that one be interesting. But uh, Pomona is ranked higher than Regis in the RPI, though. So, so that 16 spot for CT is looking like it's pretty good. I okay, mean, it, you know, but uh, but we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how things play out, and uh, of course we'll have to wait for the numbers to be updated and and all that stuff, which I know. People always are checking that <laughs> frequently yes. to see how things Travis things Alabama change game to game. Way to say it diplomatically. Checking, reacting, <laughs> communicating <laughs> regarding the RPI. Definitely reacting, yes. <laughs> yes, that's fair to say. 
Eagle Crest, by the way, was sitting number three in the Chassinau poll. They were at number seven in the RPI. I had to make sure myself uh, exchanging with Coach Schmidt during the week and guaranteed a top six seed because they're a conference winner, but where they go from there based on RPI and then that seating committee, who knows? Sure. They had a change in personnel now. I see a new quarterback out there on the football field for Eagle Crest. Sam on Elena. There go, yep. I haven't seen much of him yet. And I apologize if I'm misreading that. Uh, Grandview's also in action tomorrow night uh, as they finish up. Um, they'll be playing Overland and, uh, just to get tune up for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. They're always ready for the playoffs, no matter what league they're in. And so, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see uh, where they end up as well in the RPI. Grandview always interesting because they're always improving at the end of the season every year. And there goes Eagle Crest, one of the reserves, moving down the field. Get a read on his number so we can call him out. That is Wantings. I thought as one of the reserve running backs. 535 remaining in the football game. 41-14 lead Eagle Crest driving now and in the red zone after the big Wantings run. Nice to see Wantings have a decent game. We don't have the stats. Wantings has got to be near the century mark in terms of rushing yards. Probably have more, but Eagle Crest from the second quarter on has had a short field to work with very, very often. Not stat friendly, I guess. No, not at all. <laughs> in terms of yardage. 11 yard line, another handoff. And this will be carried by Jaden Vaughn. So that's neat, Jaden Vaughn, who was the workhorse early Jayden on in the football game. All the way down to the seven yard line. Able to get a Brings carry for the once Wantings was healthy and able to return Vaughn, kind of playing that secondary position in terms of number of attempts. There's Vaughn again, 21, taken in the belly, and he's gonna try to push forward. Jaden Vaughn stepped up at the line of stretch. Right now, Mike Schmidt and his offensive play callers, the staff across the way, they, you know, they're really not looking for scores. The they're looking to kill clock. Correction number 98, Jack. Of Boyer. course, there's a bunch of teenagers out on the field who like to score themselves. <laughs> so well, how do you think this is going to play out with Eagle Crest? With being a conference winner, seedings and all, what, what do you think is going to happen with all of it then? Uh, well, I, I think they, they seed him. I, I'm not exactly sure how they seed those top six, but, uh, I mean, you, it's hard to argue with this body of work. They have uh, they have played some impressive teams. This has not been a, an easy schedule by any means. They've, they've made it look easy, but uh, they've got to get a lot of uh, respect, I would imagine, for this. So, you know, I'm thinking maybe third, fourth. Maybe, you know, you got your Something dollars like and your right. Pomona in there and Mullen. I mean, so... You know, you could be working like maybe the four-ish sounds about maybe right. Yeah, I think that's right. You know, fair to say they're not the they're not going to get a one seed, but they don't deserve the sixth conference sure. title winner sure. seed. Well, and another interesting thing about the changes this year: um, less playoff rounds to get through, certainly, and uh, not playing in the Centennial League. You're going to come out of this Lock fairly healthy, whereas in years past there, was, there have always been key injuries uh, to all of those teams, and so um, they've been able to rotate and use their depth and things like that. So I, I got to feel like most of the teams here will be fresher and a little less taxed when it comes to these um, marquee matchups. I think so. You know, that's a great point to bring up because I've had coaches, not only from your bureau, but elsewhere, they they bring that up with the, with maybe there's some negatives you feel as Crutch is going to pass the ball downfield. There's Carnegie getting another reception. But they've said that, that you know, whatever whatever the detractors say about the switch, waterfall alignment, RPI, all that, is that one nice thing is exactly what you just said. Hey, so we've had running clock in the back end of the season. We're all going to be healthy, and you're going to see some really entertaining football in the playoffs. Sure. And once coaches brought that up, I'm like, okay, that is a definite positive. That will work. You, that's what we want. We want everybody at full strength. We want to see, you know, what, what these teams have. And, and, you know, the teams with depth certainly will, uh, you know, it, it, that's a, a strength, you know. And, yeah. and it is something that could be a decisive, you know, different factor. But you just want to see everybody at full strength. Right. Their full complement, what they've been working with all year. 
you know, and, and just to have it be fully on display. And that'll all shake out this Sunday, which is a fun time. It's it's no different locally as March Madness with Selection Sunday. <laughs> I mean, for us locally, we wait around. And I'm okay, I'm patient about it. We'll wait for the announcement of the brackets and you kind of all get to read how that the, the works up. And the brackets will be smaller this time though. Uh, you yeah. know, in years past when you've got the 32, it's, uh, you know, I'm always looking at six to seven teams for you right. know, making it. And here we're probably looking at three, maybe four, you know, if CT can get in. Um, so it'll be, the, those brackets will be a little tighter and you can look down the line a lot quicker. Catch for Chris. McKayhern there, 259 Benjamin remaining in the football game for Arvada West. As they try to put together maybe one last hurrah before they finish the football season. Again, Courtney Oaks from the Aurora Sentinel. He's going to go downstairs and get work done. And now Eagle Press has indeed completed the feat. So he's probably got not only a game recap, but he's got a big feature article to do on these guys. Plenty to do. Thanks, Marty. Thanks. So Stream at Sports has been a wonderful season. We've been just enjoyed everything that you guys have done and uh, and just all the fo all the Aurora football that you got to bring to people. So thanks so much for everything that you do and caring about it so much uh, and really just dedicating yourself to high school football and, and high school athletes in general because I know everybody appreciates it. It's nice of Courtney to bring that up. With That was not planned. We didn't even talk about that, but that makes the, the crew smile. And hey, real quick reaction. Player of the game, who do you think? I got to go with Jalen Murgerson. Okay, let's go with that. Victor Garns is, you know, obviously always yeah, a candidate, but Jalen just... Uh, We're going to go with Jalen Murgerson. We'll present that properly on graphic in, in just a few moments. I, I, I wanted to make sure I asked you, but I think so. Jalen Murgerson. Just his, his calmness and his, his rushing ability is uh, just his command of this offense is, is just so impressive and certainly stood out tonight in when they really needed a victory. So um, props to Jalen. We'll be seeing more of him in the playoffs. Mergerson, I have him. And remember, all my stats are unofficial for three touchdown passes and one touchdown run. Junior Jalen Mergerson, the quarterback for Eagle Press, our A-Town player of the game. Thanks to Courtney Oaks once again. Dig around AuroraSentinel.com. Hey, right on cue. Oh, I thought that was a great catch by Chase Dixon. Not going to happen there. So thanks to Courtney. Courtney Oaks, AuroraSentinel.com, and congratulations to our A-Town game for player of the game, and that is quarterback Jalen Mergerson. Three touchdown passes, one touchdown run. It was actually Mergerson's 22-yard run that started the scoring onslaught for the Raptors in this football game. 2.13 on the clock, A. West looking for a last score before they finish off the season. We haven't seen Johnny Crutch run the football too much. Meanwhile, Arvada West, we don't want to disrespect them and what they've done. They're going to finish up 6-4 and four overall on the season, 2-3 and three in conference. But last year, they earned one victory in this decade. No more than six victories. They went 6-5 and five back in 2010. Brad Pyatt, in his third year, has built this program to where they have some pride, which uh, there's a lot of football pedigree and heritage up there at Arvada West. I think Brad Pyatt, the alum from A West, has found the personnel that he's wanting to build with, one of them being the quarterback, Johnny Crutch. Also, Corey Kerrigan. And some of the big boys who are a little bit Pretty younger, like Jackson German, the linebacker. You got a talent like Tony Cass, just a sophomore returning. Because keep in mind that, you know, this is a squad that started six sophomores on offense. And speaking of Arvada West, eight sophomore starters to begin the year. Four of them were two-year starters to qualify it under Brad Pyatt. So he, they went with the young guys to help build this thing up. Uh, I think there's no reason to bow your head down if you're A. West finishing with a loss against an undefeated football squad that's top five in the state. They're going to finish up with six victories, equal to the most they've ever had in the decade. Pass downfield from Crutch. 
trying to get it to Chase Dixon. Dixon's going to finish up a magnificent year, near 1,000 yards. I don't have the stats, but near 70 receptions on the season. What an outstanding senior season for Chase Dixon. Also, Trevor Lepke had an outstanding game as a wide receiver. Raptors will take over on downs. And we wish the best for the likes of Joey Perez and what his opportunities may be at the next level. So Arvada West is going to finish 6-4, and four, thanks to Bruna Lanigan, by the way, at A. West, the athletic secretary, very helpful during the week with rosters, personnel well, information, even a couple of historical pieces that I wanted to clear up. So appreciate that, Bruna. And also have to thank Sandy Suazo, who always hooks us up. A.D. Vince Orlando from Eagle Crest High School. They're going to have a nice celebration here at Legacy Stadium. Under one minute on the clock and ticking. You see the Raptors downfield just waiting to celebrate. Will we get the Nana? That's what I want to know. What we do know is Eagle Crest will finish Mercy with a conference title and their first undefeated regular season since 1993. Jalen Murderson, the eight-town player of the game with three touchdown passes, one touchdown run. Vic Garns with an interception and two touchdowns, one a 32-yard reception, one a five-yard TD run, and it's 24 seconds in counting. Good sportsmanship, they're gonna shake hands. A. West will finish up their season at six and four. The Eagle Crest Raptors move to 10-0 in 2016. They do complete the feat. And I think we're gonna see some nice visuals if you like to watch Preps level communities celebrate. That is the end of the football West game. Final Cat score 41 to 14. League champion Eagle Crest Raptors. I want to thank Morgan Dizak from Chassanau for visiting at halftime. Also, Courtney Oaks from the Aurora Sentinel for dropping the knowledge on us. So much information regarding not only football, but what's coming up in the volleyball postseason, gymnastics. So thanks, Courtney, at AuroraSentinel.com. Thank you so much to. Our crew, Phil Mildren, the executive producer, Dominic Serva, Alex Wines, Gail Kakak, with technical and visual expertise. I'm Marty Cesario. Now that you put up my Twitter handle, I'll go ahead and pump out my final tweet. Bam, there it goes, final score, 41-14. And I just had to, in this case, no stats for players, because the big story is Eagle Crest has finished the regular season 10-0, their first undefeated regular season since 1993. From there, they just gotta wait for Sunday. Where are they gonna get seated in the upcoming Class 5A playoffs? Congratulations to Mike Schmidt and his Black Hats. With a big victory tonight at Legacy Stadium, they finish up 10-0. We say good night from Southeast Aurora. Ladies and gentlemen, as you leave tonight's stadium, please do your part in helping the Legacy Stadium cleanup crew. There are trash receptacles located at the breezeways and all the corridors. As you leave, please take your trash, deposit it in those trash receptacles. Once again, thank you for doing your part to help keeping Legacy Stadium clean and green.